So if you were to go up to someone on the streets, pull out a gun, and ask them what their favorite internet cartoon is, you will probably hear generic answers like Homestar Runner, Happy Tree Friends, Astuff Movie, or even... H H hell of a boss? What is the big deal of the show anyway? I keep hearing so much about the characters, but I never looked into the... Oh god. Oh god! There's, There's so, so much, much porn! porn. Anyway, the point is, there are a lot of amazing internet cartoons out there that so many people hold near and dear. But if you are a cultured person like myself, we all know that the best internet cartoon out there has to be Ed's World. Ed's World is one of the first series I ever watched on YouTube all the way back in the mystical year of 2010. That was 12 years ago, I'm just realizing. Holy shit, I am getting old. It was a show that was funny, had likable characters, and it was just such a joy to watch. They have been producing animations for almost 20 years now, which is a pretty amazing feat, since most old cartoons on the internet tend to slowly fade away and can also become very outdated as time goes on. But the fact that Edgeworld has stuck around for so long really shows how much it means to people. But because of how long this series has been around for, it has been through a lot to get to where it is now. Mainly the show's creator, Ed Gould, unfortunately passing away back in 2012. There was Ed's World Legacy that ran from 2012 to 2016, but I already made a video discussing what happened with that series and what my opinions on it are. But to make it brief, it was okay. Some episodes were good, while others were not good. After Legacy ended, the show went on a hiatus for a while. Since most of the crew that worked on Legacy had done what they were paid to do and wanted to move on, the show was handed back to Ed Gould's family, since Tomska, who was the showrunner for Legacy, did not want to be involved with the series anymore, for a lot of reasons that I don't really want to get into right now. Control of the series was given to Matt Hargraves, who was not only one of the main characters in the series, but was also really close friends with Ed since they were really young. Now it took a while to get Ed's World back up and running again, since firstly, they lost almost 3 years of back taxes, which completely destroyed the production budget. And like I brought up earlier, most of the crew that worked on Legacy had unfortunately left, so they sort of had to start from scratch and bring on an entire new team. But after 4 years of gathering artists, new crew members, and new voice actors, Ed's World made its grand return on the 1st of August 2020, with the episode, Fan Service Part 2. This began a new era of Ed's World, that most fans call Ed's World Beyond, with new animations, merchandising, and comics. Now, as a huge fan of the series, I was more than hyped to see Ed's World finally return after four years of radio silence. But it's been almost two years since this new era of Ed's World first begun. So, what are my current thoughts on modern Ed's World? Eh, I kind of like the new series. But at the same time, a lot of the charm that made the original episode so memorable and amazing is kind of gone now, and the series doesn't really feel the same anymore. So me being the pathetic loser I am, I spent the past few days watching over the new animations and even read over the new comics. To answer the question, what is the problem with modern Ed's world? Now before I get into this critique of the new series, I want to make it clear that I am not attacking Matt Hargraves. Christopher Bingham, or any of the new animators and voice actors involved in the series. I understand that they are really trying their best to recapture the magic of what made Ed's World so amazing, and I am not saying that they are talentless or should quit the series. Working on a series as big as Ed's World is not an easy task, and I immensely respect the entire crew for their hard work and dedication to the series. I'm just talking about my personal opinions on the series, while also hopefully giving some constructive criticism and feedback to the new crew. So, with all that said, let's get into this video essay on the problems of modern Ed's world. As of writing the script, there has been 8 episodes released since 2020, including an Els, El, Els World? El, El, bleh, that's a fucking tongue twisted there. Els, Els World, yeah. Els World. Which is essentially just female Ed's World, so, you know, all good. And this animatic called Ran Dub. Oh, I see what you did there, I see what you did there. Now, the new series did have some promise, with the first episode, Fan Service Part 2. It showed off the new animation style, as well as a pretty funny setup and great acting from Matt. But as more episodes were released over the next few months, something fell weird with the new episodes. It's kind of hard to properly dive deep into the issues with the new series, since there's only been a few episodes released. 
But after doing months of heavy research, I think I have sort of figured out the issue with the new series. Maybe, I'm not too sure, but I think I figured it out. But first, I would like to talk about some stuff I like about the new series, before I get into the stuff I don't like. Firstly, one thing I can praise right off the bat is the animation. They still kept a simple design look to the older episodes, while also upgrading the style and making it look much better for today's modern audience. Plus, they also keep the animation consistent, and it's not like the animation is high quality in one episode, and then kinda shit the next episode. Honestly, that was a big issue I had with Legacy. Like, in one episode, the animation will be really fluid, and look really good. Then in the next episode, there will be a pretty big dip in quality. But thankfully in the new series, they kept the animation consistent in each episode. Plus, they aren't afraid to push themselves by adding squash and stretch movements, and even being more exaggerated. Like this moving shot in the episode, Surf and Turf Wars Part 1. Like, damn, this looks so good. Plus, I do kind of like the visual jokes here. I wouldn't say the visual jokes are fantastic or anything, but they tried and I did find myself slightly giggling at some of them. So they get a C- for effort. In terms of other positives I have with the series, uh, that's kind of it really, I don't really have much more to say. The rest of this video is going to be a rant, so sit down and get ready, cause this'll be fun. I think my biggest issue with the new series has got to be the humor and pacing. While I was watching the new episodes, I kind of realized that I didn't laugh once. I think at most, I had a slight giggle three or maybe four times, but that's really it. They try to fire so many jokes at the viewers, but most of the time they never really land. Which is weird, since Edgeworld has always been able to make me laugh so much. Even some of the episodes in Legacy garnered some laughs out of me. But here, it sort of feels like they're trying so hard to make the viewers laugh with jokes that just aren't funny. I really hate saying this, since I can tell that there are genuine attempts at humor here, but most of the time, the jokes just never work and feel bland. Like, they'll try to tell a joke, then there'll be a long pause for the viewers to laugh, but it feels like they're basically telling the viewers to laugh, and it just comes off as kind of awkward. Plus, it doesn't help that some of the jokes just go on and on and on, and don't have a funny payoff. A tiger? My god! It's eating me! It's tearing me apart! What's a tiger even doing here? It's just eaten my entire lower half! This is the worst pain I've ever felt in my whole life! How am I even conscious right now? And some of the shorter episodes will only have one joke throughout its one time, and that's it. A great example of this has to be the short episode, The Birds and the Bees. The entire joke in this episode is that this scientist that we have never seen before, by the way, creates this bird bee thingy and then falls in love with it. Then the bird bee monster dumps him, and then the rest of the episode is just a sponsor for Audible. Yep, a sponsorship for Audible. This has to be my least favorite Edgeworld episode in the entire series. First of all, Ed, Tom, and Matt are nowhere to be seen. We have never seen this mad scientist character in any other episode, and half of the video is dedicated to a sponsor. Plus, the only joke in the episode is that the scientist falls in love with this monster thingy, and that's it. There's no unique twists, nothing really happens, and I don't see why this was even considered to be an Edgeworld episode if it has nothing to do with the main Edgeworld characters. Plus, it's kind of annoying that half this episode is just a paid sponsorship for Audible. I do understand that having a sponsor is important, as it can help fund the channel and also pay for the crew members. But the fact that it takes up half the runtime, and how it feels like they only made this episode to get a sponsor, is pretty annoying, I won't lie. The same could be said about the Elseworld episode, Slippery Slope. While there are some attempts to tell more jokes here, they also suffer from being unfunny and dragging on for way too long. Plus, most of the humor comes from the characters going snowboarding down a dangerous hill, and the entire episode is just really bland and not really interesting. And honestly, I don't really see why they made this an Elseworld episode. This could have easily been an episode with Ed, Tom, and Matt, but for some reason, they made it about their female counterparts. And no, I don't hate women and I'm not sexist at all, don't worry. But this episode sort of felt like an excuse to have the woman versions of the main guys in an episode. I will say that the only episode that I thought was sort of, kind of funny, would probably be Surf and Turf Wars Part 1. And as of recording this, Part 2 has not come out yet, so I can't really judge that right now. I did like some of the visual jokes that were in this episode, but some of the other jokes in this episode were also really bland and kept going on and on and on, which just becomes really frustrating after a while. Another issue I have with the newer episodes is the pacing. The pacing here just does not feel natural in the slightest. 
Scenes will just go on and on and on for ages, and then suddenly jump to the next scene without any smooth or clean transitions. This sorta of ties into my issues with the humor, and how jokes will drag on for ages without any good payoff. Like, I swear some scenes can just happen completely out of nowhere, and then they never get brought up again in the episode. Like, take this scene for example in the Beaster Bunny. Golly gee, Jimmaker super ga- I mean, Steve. Did you hear something? Yeah, everything. All of the time. All of the time. Super lad. Just take the shot, Super Dingus. I won! Yay! It happens right out of nowhere, it's not really funny, and it never gets brought up again. So what was the point of the scene exactly if it adds nothing to the story? I don't know man, I don't even know why I'm doing this shit, like I'm 18 ranting about a fucking internet cartoon, like where the fuck did it all go wrong man, like for real, I need to touch grass or something. The original series didn't have the best pacing either, but the scenes did work thanks to the clever jokes, witty dialogue, and funny characters. Hell, even some of the episodes in Legacy had way better pacing. With how slow the pacing is, it often makes some scenes and moments really boring to watch. Which is something I never thought I would say about Ed's World. But if there is one thing this series has always been known for, it's gotta be a fun and charming main cast of characters. Ed, Matt, and Tom, and I guess Tord, have always been such an enjoyable main group of characters to watch. Even in the weakest Legacy episodes, I still really enjoy their banter. Now how are they in the new series? Eh, they're okay I guess. It's important to mention that the only original voice actor that returned was Matt Hargraves. Ed couldn't return for, well, obvious reasons. And Tom Scott wanted nothing to do with the new series. So they brought on George Gould to replace Ed and Ed Templer to replace Tom. That's a lot of Eds there. And they both do a pretty good job, I won't lie. Although they do have their flaws. I think casting Ed's brother as Ed is really good casting. He's able to replicate Ed's voice perfectly, and it never once felt distracting. An issue I had with Legacy is that Tim had to... Yeah, I'm not gonna bother pronouncing that. Wasn't really the best choice for Ed. I'm not saying he's an awful voice actor. Far from it, actually. I think Tim is a fantastic actor. But he didn't really work that well as Ed if I'm gonna be 100% honest. They changed up his character a lot in that series to fit with Tim's voice, and it just didn't really work for me. But George Gould is really good for Ed. Even the way they introduced George in the casting call was pretty clever, I won't lie. George Gould? Reading for Ed? Gould? Any relation? Yeah, I'm Ed's brother. Oh, yeah, uh, cool, you got it. Sorry, what? You don't want me to audition? No need, this just makes sense. Well, if you're sure. That okay with you, Ed? Yeah, whatever. See, you've already started. I wouldn't say George is perfect, however, as you can tell that his voice acting is a little bit rusty. Looking at his IMDb page, he hasn't really done anything outside of Ed's world in terms of voice acting. But I do believe that he's trying his best, and that eventually he'll get better as time goes on. There's also Ed Templer as Tom. Now, Ed Templer is a fantastic voice actor, there's no doubting that. You can tell that he is very experienced and knows how to deliver his lines in a somewhat professional way. But in terms of Tom as a character, there is a lot more to be desired. He seems to act like the common sense guy of the group, while Ed and Matt are seen as the crazy ones, when originally it was Ed and Matt who were kind of the smart ones, while Tom was the crazy one. Hell, even he acknowledges this. <sighs> I remember when you were the smart one. Now I'm not saying this is awful, since Tom is still a good character, but it doesn't really make sense why they would take away what originally made him so enjoyable to watch. Maybe they need more time to develop his character, as he's only been in like, two main episodes so far, but for now, he really needs more development. Then we got Matt, and honestly, there isn't really that much to say about him. Matt Hargraves does a really good job in voice him as usual. And I really admire his dedication to the role. He's still the fun and charming character he always was. There's not really much else to say about Matt. Pretty good. That's really it. On a small side note, I think it would be really cool if we got to see Tord return in this new series. They would have to get a new voice actor for him, since the original voice of Tord kind of ditched the internet after getting harassed by fans, and his legacy voice actor, Jamie Spicer Lewis, did some kind of awful things that I don't really want to mention here. But I'd say they could bring back his character, as long as they handle it right, and they don't mess up like they did with Legacy. 
Now, before we finish wrapping up this video, there is another part of Modern Netherworld that I really want to discuss. Something that I don't see a lot of people talk about nowadays, and that is the comics. I'm actually a really big fan of the OG comics. It's sort of what inspired me to get into art and design. And look where that got me now, am I right? So I wanted to see if the newer comics are any good. And they're pretty decent, I won't lie. Since they are limited to three or maybe four panels, they have to be very clever with how they execute the jokes. And honestly, the jokes really work here. I found myself laughing way more at the comics rather than the actual animations. The jokes don't drag on and on for ages, and they get right to the punchline. Another advantage to being in a comic format is that it allows for much more detailed and expressive art that looks really good. Although I wouldn't say the comics are amazing, Sometimes the art can be kind of generic, like a character standing around a plain background with nothing much happening, and some of the jokes can also be kind of bland and not really funny. Still though, I would highly recommend you guys check out the comics. They are a lot better than the animations, and I really enjoyed reading them. And yeah, that's kind of it. On to the final conclusion segment. Yay. You know, I do genuinely feel bad for ripping into Modern Ed's world. If it weren't for Ed's world, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. I'm extremely passionate about this silly little internet cartoon, and I'm not trying to make fun of the creators or even the team, but rather discuss my issues and hopefully give some constructive criticism. I know that Matt Hargraves and Christopher Bingham are doing their best to create something that would not only please the fans, but potential new viewers to the series. I wouldn't say that Modern Ed's world is the worst thing ever. I can easily tell that there is genuine love and passion put into the series, with how dedicated the crew is and how much time and effort is put into each episode. While I do stand by my issues with the series, and I do believe there are some glaring problems that greatly hinder the quality, I also strongly believe that they can improve as time goes on, and I'm personally so excited to see more from them. Again, props to Matt Hargraves for not only continuing the series, but keeping it alive after all this time. It cannot be an easy task living up to the legacy that was originally created by someone you care deeply about. And I can see that Matt is clearly trying his best, so I really respect that. But for now, I feel like Modern Ed's World does have a lot to improve on in terms of the stories, characters, and especially humor. They have only made a few episodes in the span of two years, so we'll have to wait and see what they have planned for the future. And personally, I can't wait. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and hopefully the Edsville fans don't come after me for having an opinion, because that would be pretty shitty, wouldn't it? Also, I promise I will make a positive video in Edsville someday, like maybe next year, but like soon-ish, because I do genuinely like the series, just like, I will make a positive video someday. Not now, but someday. But yeah, I'm just gonna end off this video before I say something that'll piss off the fans, so, um, yeah, bye.